This is Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is Senator Padme Amidala. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order... ...and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This message is a warning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. Do not return to the Temple. That time has passed, and our future is uncertain. We will each be challenged. Our trust. Our faith. Our friendships. But we must persevere. And in time, a new hope will emerge. May the Force be with you. Always. Padme Amidala was in the final stages of labor, her body racked with pain as she struggled to bring her twin children into the world. Beside her, the medical droids beeped and whirred, monitoring her vital signs and doing everything in their limited power to ensure a safe delivery. Despite their efforts, it quickly became clear that something was wrong. Padme's heart rate was plummeting, her breathing shallow and labored as she cried out for her fallen husband. Even as the droids worked frantically to stabilize her, they recognized that she was fading rapidly. As every ounce of fight appeared to leave Padme's body, she began to go completely limp, begging the Force to let her pass to ease the heartbreak she felt. Don't give up, Padme. <laughs> Padme winced in pain, but managed to offer a faint smile as the medical droid announced the birth of her twins. Luke. With all her strength, Padme reached out to touch her infant son, a new source of energy appearing within her. The medical droid then announced the arrival of her second child. It's a girl. Leia. The Force had reinvigorated her spirit. Her weakening state slowly abated. The sight of her children steeled her will as strength began to flood back into her frame. One week later, a meeting between Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Bail Organa took place. The issue of Padme's survival had come up, but they knew it was vital to discuss their next steps in the fight against the Empire, and to come up with a plan to protect Padme and her children. As they gathered around a dimly lit table, the weight of their responsibilities hung heavy in the air. The safety of Padme and the children must be our priority. She may be one of our most powerful allies in the dark times to come. I agree. But surely in a galaxy that is so thoroughly turned against us, it may be impossible to assure their safety. Hidden, they must remain. A perilous path, it is. But a Jedi's duty to keep them safe, we must. But how do we keep them hidden? The Empire has eyes everywhere. We will need to go into hiding ourselves and protect Padme from the shadows. No doubt the Emperor will see Padme as a threat to his political control. Protect her, we must. But the Force, we cannot ignore. Strong it is in the Skywalker bloodline. The children, trained, they must be. Train them? Are you suggesting that you and Obi-Wan here start a new Jedi Order? No. We must remain inconspicuous. However, we must ensure the twins are trained in the ways of the Force. They will be our best hope for defeating the Empire. But the timing is wrong. Padme had the force within her. She's strong. Train them in due time, we shall. And what of Skywalker? Anakin is dead. He fell to the dark side. He was consumed by it. There was nothing left to save. Painful this is. Yet, the truth remains. I understand. We must focus on the future and protect what we have left. But who will keep the children? I cannot separate them from their mother in good conscience. The Order is gone, and I am no longer sure we ever had the right to do so, even to others such as ourselves. Perhaps. Right you may be. Complacent. Obviously we were. Decadent. Involved in the war. We should not have become. Any hope for progress we had. Lost in the fog it was. Well, as much as I agree with you two, it's likely that Palpatine will target Padme. She is no doubt fully aware of Palpatine's connection to Anakin and will use that to push back politically. She will become a target. 
Are we sure that it's safe for her to return to the public eye? If she attempts to push back through the Senate, there is no doubt that Palpatine will accelerate any plans. He is more likely to prescribe her and her family than allow her to continue opposing him. Whether it is safe or not, do not presume we have an illusion of choice on whether Padme chooses to fight. The two continued to argue for the next hour as Yoda pondered each scenario carefully in his aged mind. If the children are kept together, their strength in the Force could make them a beacon for the Sith in the future. And if they are kept apart, they may yet be so connected that it will not matter either way. As you say, the Force works in mysterious ways. If they are meant to fight together, it will not matter. And if separated they are, a bond they will lose. Yet, a different bond they may gain if apart they are. Only one may decide her path. The sound of footsteps approaching silenced further communication as the door opened, revealing a tired yet determined Padme. She had recovered quickly from childbirth, an impressive feat after delivering twins. She looked over each of the men thoroughly, her glare only intensifying as they explained the situation. Padme. As she pulled herself up taller, her small frame radiating both beauty and strength, Padme took a deep breath. She knew she had to make a difficult choice. Keep them safe. Keep them happy. Burn the edges of the galaxy if you have to. But if this is what I have to do, I will make sure that they are cared for. I will see them. Even if I get no closer than through macro binoculars, I will see that they are happy, even if they may think I am dead. And if I find out they aren't, I will burn the galaxy to get them back. Her glare in this moment, roiling with the turmoil of the past hours, could have stopped Palpatine himself in his tracks. Do you understand, Master Jedi? If they don't, I may just help you. Understand, we do. They will be safe, Padme. Of that you have my promise. It was with a shattered heart that Padme stood with Yoda and Bale, as she watched Obi-Wan board a ship with her son, bound for Tatooine, to the only other family he had. And this was how the dark times began, with unbridled sorrow. The Galactic Empire grew in power, its dark shadow encompassing the galaxy. Political ideals became non-entity as the Senate evolved into an intricate propaganda tool for the Empire. As the galaxy grew darker, so did the lives of those who survived the fall of the Republic. To keep herself, her children, and any possibility of a future Republic alive, Padme Amidala made the difficult decision to fake her death. Reported to have died from a ship crash accident, the former senator was laid to rest as the planet of Naboo held a vigil for their beloved Padme. Images of her time as senator and as queen projected planet-wide. With a heavy heart, Padme watched her people mourn as Senator Organa stood at her side. Though they may not have wanted to think about it, both knew without a doubt that Palpatine would sabotage her career and endanger her life due to her outspokenness in the Senate and her ability to convince others to do what was right. If Padme returned to politics, there would be no protection for her, and Palpatine would be sure to snuff out her light as quickly as he could. Senator Organa, and a few trusted figures such as Mon Mothma and Master Kenobi, knew of Padme's survival due to former allegiances, though her fake death was kept a secret amongst most politicians for fear of whistleblowers attempting to gain favor with the new Emperor. Padme's young twins were separated, with Leia being looked after by Senator Organa as his daughter, and Luke being cared for by Owen and Beru Lars. Both children were aware of their mother, who would visit them every few months, spending a week at a time with them in a secluded area, though neither knew the full danger Padme put herself in every time she visited. Both Bale and Obi-Wan would make sure Padme's time with her children was safe and gracious as the Empire's dark touch began to infect every planet in the galaxy. Each twin thought of their caretakers as family. They were aunts and uncles responsible for keeping them safe while their mother was away. The question of their father and his fate never came up between Padme and her children. 
She feared that the more they grew, the more questions they would ask. Padme would not lie to her children if they asked. But to her, she wanted to remember Anakin as he was before the dark side corrupted him. The Anakin before Mustafar, before his descent into madness and the darkness that led to his demise. She wanted to remember him as lovely, as kind, protective, caring, as her husband, not a monster. Padme knew that was how she would describe him once the questions began. Not with hate, but with love. As Padme's influence in the creation of the new, growing rebellion escalated, so did her notoriety. Going by the code name Vere, a name used in her union ceremony with Anakin that very few would connect to herself, Padme continued to leak chunks of information to the Senate. She was intent on instilling doubt in the detractors of Palpatine's empire and his rule. Although Palpatine's hold over the Senate was absolute, it was like a leaking dam. The more it collected behind its walls of censorship, the greater the pressure on the leaks became. At the beginning, a few pieces of information got through, but no one listened. They were content to believe things weren't as bad as the leaks said. But those cracks in the dam grew larger with time. Each piece of information that flowed through held more weight and destroyed ever more trust between the Senate and Palpatine. Trade agreements would disrupt plans for expansion. Incompetence would put established Imperial leaders at risk of expulsion, and corruption would lead to more empty seats in the Senate. Those who were outspoken about their disagreements were forcibly removed from their positions. Palpatine, who was rarely involved with the Senate directly, began to see the cracks in his absolutism. The Imperial Security Bureau consistently failed to bring him any more information on the one responsible for this cascade of failures, outside of a name. If this very was not found, rebellion could be easily sparked by these coals they laid, causing a fire he was eager to squelch early on. Despite their best efforts, the ISB only found themselves consistently on the wrong end of Palpatine's ire. Finally, he decided that he had no other choice. Lord Vader, I have an urgent and most delicate matter that requires your attention. Yes, my master. There is a certain individual who has been causing considerable unrest in the Senate, my young apprentice. This person, this Vera, has been leaking sensitive information to our enemies, endangering the security and stability of the entire galaxy. And you wish for me to find this traitor and bring them to justice? Destroy them. Destroy them and then make an attempt at rebellion. Yes, master. He pondered the name of Vary. It drew in his turbulent thoughts. Elsewhere in the galaxy, or equally vaguely, on Tatooine, Obi-Wan Kenobi sat in solitude. As a promise to Padme, he would provide security and oversee Luke's growth with his aunt and uncle. As each day went by, Obi-Wan felt enormous guilt over Anakin's fall to the dark side and the resulting duel. He felt he had a duty to make sure nothing would happen to the children. But he was unsettled. The bond that he and Anakin had formed during their time together smoldered, as if it were destroyed but not quite severed. The danger Obi-Wan felt was palpable, almost as though he could slice through it with his lightsaber. It made him concerned for the future. The Jedi wrapped his cloak around himself as he watched the Tatooine sunset and felt the desert cool around him. The lack of light would allow the Dune Sea to cool quickly, eventually to freezing. He was glad for the depth of the cave he had found. As a result, its temperature stayed relatively comfortable. But as he fought his own thoughts and watched the display, Obi-Wan was pulled from his melancholy by the chime of his communicator. Rising from the ground as he activated it, he was greeted by a projection of Padme. Obi-Wan, I hope you're well. As well as can be expected, with sand infiltrating every wrinkle of my robes, it's coarse and rough. And it gets everywhere, so I've heard. <laughs> so what can I do for you? First of all, how is Luke? Well, what can I say? 
The boy is growing. I can't wait for you to see him again. His interest in flying has grown. But this call isn't about Luke, is it? Thank you for caring for him while I've been away. But you are correct, Master Jedi. It's not. I have a mission in mind. A mission? Is this another one of your rebellion undertakings? Padme, please. I know you are taking a stand against the Empire, but these consistent missions will raise the ire of the Inquisitorius, and I can assure you that wouldn't be good. Obi-Wan, I don't have time for this. One of my sources, he has a lead on a high-value target. The target apparently attempted to leave an Imperial project peacefully before being detained. But, my source requested my help personally. So I am going to do what I can to rescue him. He is being held on Pantora, and I'm already on my way there. Palpatine has a warrior, his enforcing right hand. From what I've heard, he is not a threat to be taken lightly. If you could meet me on Pantora, I need you to help cover our escape as both insurance against capture and protection from this monster. Then I would be very grateful. And what does this monster go by? Rumor has it, this warrior goes by the name Darth Vader. You are the chosen one! I hate you! Vader? I'll be there. Obi-Wan had heard the name before. Hearing it again was like a knife to his heart. He felt a chill within his spine, a distant memory returning from out of the depths. The message he and Yoda had witnessed in the Jedi Temple. Lord Vader. Obi-Wan had prioritized the safety of Padme's child over missions for years, but now he had to go. He had to know. But first, he had to get off the planet. Where should I meet you? We're going to be in the capital city. I'll send the coordinates to your comlink. I'll be there as fast as I can. Obi-Wan's cave supported a man-made hangar for his ship, which he had originally acquired from Utapau during the Clone Wars. It was a reminder of his past, but it was also a pretty nifty ship. Meanwhile, over 5,000 parsecs away, Padme felt uneasy from her call with Obi-Wan. It was not often that names alone would spook a person, but having known Obi-Wan for nearly 19 years, she knew something was amiss. Within his Star Destroyer, Vader was deep in meditation, the silence of the room broken only by the characteristic breathing of the Dark Lord as he reflected on the name Palpatine had provided. With each exhale, an image from his past life would appear within his mind. The thoughts and memories aided him. They were like a gnawing pain in his head trying to remind him of something. But as Vader continued to meditate, recognition finally sparked in his mind. Padme, 